Hey, so what happens if I push that button? If I push that button, did it start streaming? I'm just uh, going to go check the live page for now. Well, um, okay, stream, help, starting stream. Your audience will get to see it in a moment. Get ready. Okay, looks like I am live. Let's go over to this page. Okay, right, so it looks like this is live, and I think people can actually see me, although I don't know if anybody's watching right now. Cool. <laughs> I have uh, I have absolutely no idea. This is kind of crazy, playing with live, uh, YouTube live. Okay, it says 21 people are watching right now. If you guys uh, tuned in a moment ago, and it... Uh, <laughs> basically look like me staring at a screen not knowing what I was doing yeah I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing right now I'm just trying to trying to start a live stream with software that uh, I've never used before so uh, this is uh, this is gonna look a little bit tricky but I guess right now you guys can see me and you can see uh, uh, my screen that I'm sharing with you right now so uh, maybe I should just uh, hide these bookmarks. The Facebook is gonna be is there for a reason. I want to show you guys that. Um, but yeah, let's see. Uh, okay, wow, well, there <laughs> got some comments already. Um, okay, so early squad, hit that like button. <laughs> hey, buddy. Okay, well, hey everybody. Um, Anisha, I'm learning JavaScript from your tutorials these days. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. Um, hi, hi Nilesh. Hi, Sriraj. Um, yeah, I do apologize if I uh, pronounce a few people's names wrong. Um, hello, Vignek. Cool. Uh, so, guys, uh, I thought that uh, for this video, I would, uh, I would put up a splash page for my website because uh, right now, um, if we take a look at... Uh, my website, if you go over to quintinwatt.com, it says index of, and there is nothing there. Uh, and there was actually a website here, and then I was, I took it down for some reason, I can't remember why, lost the files, and uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> I haven't had a website for a while, so I logged into Facebook, and I see a few people have uh, suggested that I, I say that I don't have a website anymore, because if you go to Quintin Watt, obviously, there's nothing here, so uh, I do need to work on getting my own website back up again, uh, and that's probably going to take some time, but I can put up a splash page or just something at the moment so that when you go there, it doesn't say this. Um, so, uh, yeah, I thought uh, I'd clear up what was in my local host. Um, so, uh, basically, I've got... Uh, Got MAMP open over here. I don't know if you guys can see that. Hopefully, yeah, okay, it looks like you should be able to see that. So I've got MAMP open over here. And uh, if we go over to my htdocs folder, that is all empty. Um, and so now we can work on building a splash page for me and then uh, uploading that to, to my current website. So uh, I looked around my computer for a little while and I thought I would use this picture, which um, is called Pretty Good Looking Coffee. <laughs> and this is a photo I took quite a while back, which is just a photo of a coffee mug and my Mac laptop. Uh, this is at my aunt's house, and I think I'm going to use this as a background and then maybe just uh, put, well, yeah, just put some text over here to say, like, um, I don't know, something. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll get my website up soon. Have a coffee or enjoy a coffee while you wait or something. I don't know. We can, can, uh, can get a little bit cute with uh, our wording later. Right, so uh, let's see what you guys are saying in the comments real quick. Um, <laughs> okay, so... Nilesh, you want to learn Angular JS? Awesome. I uh, I don't actually work with Angular. Um, I've never actually worked with Angular, so I should probably uh, take a look at that myself as well. Uh, Anthony, hi Kelvin. <laughs> Who 
Who's Kelvin? Um, anyway, okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, let's, let's jump back over to the screen sharing. Okay, so like I said, I wanted to, to make a splash page for my site. So uh, let's open up that picture over there in Photoshop. And um, like I said, I just maybe want to put some text on here. So I can play around with a silly little design. Um, although like this is going to be so, so simple, it's probably not even worth uh, designing it because literally all I want to do is maybe um, change this font here to Open Sans. Okay, computer's not responding. <laughs> open Sans, uh, bold, right? Yeah, okay. And uh, yeah. Literally, just want to put a message in here like, uh, "Hi." That should probably be white. I'm changing the color, by the way. Just something like, "Hi." I promise. I'll. something better here soon. Um, but for now, uh, check out my YouTube channel. And then uh, could uh, <laughs> could make this a little bit look a little bit better as well. Um, by making that bigger and then just putting a button down here that links to YouTube like a big red button. Uh, and in fact, I don't know maybe we should uh, move this high to be like on its own line nice and big and then uh, the paragraph and then the button. So um, let's get another. Uh, text box in here. Okay, cool. We'll just uh, make that a little bit bigger. So yeah, make that massive. Hi. Um. Yeah, like I said, just put the paragraph somewhere over there and then a button to YouTube. So um, if you guys don't know how to use Photoshop, you know, don't worry about this. But uh, yeah, I'm just going to, um, I'm just basically showing you guys what I'd like to do here. Um, and uh, yeah, I want a red, I don't know, maybe I should use green. Some green or something like that. I think the green looks way better, doesn't it? <laughs> that was my magic mouse. Sometimes it scrolls when it really doesn't need to. Anyway. Did I spell channel wrong? Or is that exactly how you spell it? Um, <laughs> awesome. Sounds good. Okay, so uh, basically uh, what I'm seeing here is that I have my message, I have my paragraph, and I have um, what I'm going to use as a button. So I'll, I'll just use like a green color like this with uh, um, some text on it like that. But you can see that right now, um, because the text is white, uh, so there are certain areas by the coffee mug where you can't actually see what this text says. Um, it sort of disappears into the background, and that's obviously because the background is white. So uh, kind of a trick to get around this that most people will use in development, and I, I use it all the time, 
is to literally go over to your background image that you're using, which in this case is uh, obviously this one with the mug, and I'm just going to darken that a little bit. So I'll place a uh, transparent layer over that and uh, literally just get a paint bucket, paint it black, and take the transparency down to like 40 or 35 or yeah, somewhere where it's, the text is readable but the image is still visible. So 20%, 15%, something like that. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, so now you can see the image, you can see the text. Um, and uh, yeah, the design is pretty simple and straightforward. So uh, we should be able to work with this quite easily. Um, and we should be able to build this quite quickly. So hopefully uh, I'll have, I'll build this and then by the end of the live stream, just push it live and we will have done, <laughs> I will have made a video and also done something for myself and my website that I haven't had the chance to do for a really long time. Um, yeah, so basically knocking out two birds with one stone right now. Uh, cool. So let's take a look at what you guys are saying in the comments. Team Plutonian needs my help. Well, um, you know what? Team, what is this? Team Plutonian. <laughs> Uh, yeah, dude, if you uh, if you need help, you can send me an email. I do have a video explaining how you can contact me via email. Uh, if it is within like the constraints of something that I actually want to do or something that I can actually do for you, I will definitely help you. Uh, if you're asking me to do work for you in terms of like, I don't know, building a website or helping with a project, obviously there are some things that I just cannot do so then i uh, i just have to say no um but yeah send me an email and uh, i'll let you guys i'll let you know if i can help you or not so you say plutoin.com is your website and your js files aren't loading i actually didn't <laughs> i didn't read your comment further but yeah uh dude um, I'd say just look into your, your URLs or something. Um, anyway, let, let me move on with this and uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> maybe, maybe what I'm doing in this uh, video will help you realize what you did wrong with your JS or well, actually I don't think I'm going to be, be using JS here, but your CSS. So uh, like this is literally the kind of website that I want to make right now. Um, so let's uh, let's uh, work on actually making this. So I'm going to minimize Photoshop um, and go over to my htdocs folder and I want to actually create this file now. So uh, I'm going to uh, not right click and say new file. Instead I'll go to sublime and say file, save as, and I'll put this in my htdocs folder and I'm going to call it index.html right because every time you create a home page or a splash page or the first page that a user want, needs to land on on your site you'll either call it index.html or index.php if you're using php or html like i am um, obviously if you're using a different language then index index whatever the uh, um, <laughs> coding language is i guess okay so save this right and now we need to obviously open up our template. So uh, Sublime is pretty awesome because it just did all of that stuff for me, right? And um, I'm just gonna say Quinton Watt splash page for the title. Okay, in my head, I'm also gonna link to a CSS file because obviously I need CSS. So let's go link um, type style sheet or type is uh, text.css relationship style sheet href uh, we don't actually know yet because i need to make the uh, the css file so let's go file new uh, and then let's just call this uh, sort of control s to save uh, saving it in the same place as my index file and i'm going to call this um, main.css i guess <laughs> main.css, okay, save, right, and now I have my CSS file, 
And uh, for a splash page, because this is going to be fairly simple, um, all I want to do is uh, I'm just going to keep my files in the same directory. So index and CSS, it's fine that they're all going to be here because this isn't going to get complicated. We're not going to have like some insane file structure with an insane website. It's just a splash page. So uh, I'm just going to leave my index and my main CSS as they are. I would like to copy that image that's on my desktop and paste that in here as well. So now I have the uh, image here as well with that super long name. And uh, now I can go back over to my HTML file, right? And now I know the href for my CSS. It's just going to be main dot CSS. And um, yeah, uh, team Plutoin, <laughs> whoever left the comment just now, uh, yeah, if, uh, if your JavaScript's not loading, um, that is probably going to have to do with your, uh, your file path. And this is something that I get asked about a lot. <laughs> Viewers tend to send me emails, send me Facebook messages, um, and like complain about this problem all the time. My file's not loading. Why? Generally, it's because you made a mistake here. I, either you, uh, um, didn't specify the correct file path or uh, you've gone ahead and then like folded your JavaScript away like in a folder somewhere like uh, in a JS folder somewhere and then you didn't include that in your file path in your href or in your source because uh, JavaScript has source like that um, and if you if you made a uh, um, typing mistake or something there then your JavaScript isn't going to load right uh, <laughs> okay, so now that I have made the a style sheet uh, or link to the style sheet, let's go ahead and put some text in the body. So what did I have in my HTML? Right, I had a background image, I have one big text, a paragraph and a button. So. Um, I'd say when you're converting a design to uh, HTML, you kind of just need to look at the structure of how you've laid things out in your design. And I mean, like I said, this is just one paragraph, this is one big heading, and uh, this is basically a button or a, a link that is styled to look as a, like a button, right? So let's go back over here. Uh, I will add this image as a background to my body, and I will then add in a, um, well, let's add a div in here. Um, so the div will just hold the content. And uh, for this div, I can just give it a class of something. I don't really know what that is going to be yet. So let's just leave that for now. I also want to create a heading one that's going to say hi with the exclamation mark. I want to have a paragraph that is going to say whatever I put in here and I don't want that line break um, okay so this is all one line by the way guys okay and then I want a link so a there we go let's let that end it off for me and say what did I have in the design now just, okay, my channel. Um, and for the href, obviously that is gonna link to my YouTube channel, which is um, youtube.com slash Quinton Watt, I think. Let me just get the link. youtube.com slash Quentin Watts, just like that. All right, save this. Let's, uh, let's take a look at what this actually looks like in the browser by opening the HTML file. I'm gonna pull that over here. Come on, guys, uh, there we go. Now you can see it. Right, so uh, yeah, basically I have 
um, an empty website almost um, that needs a little bit of styling because it doesn't look anything like my design and I've got a little bit of a problem here with stuff not converting so what is this Okay, that's probably going to be better. Hi, I promise I'll put something here. Okay, that's better. Yeah. Uh, so I think that that was kind of just like an illegal character in there. Which, by the way, reminds me that I haven't actually um, declared my... Uh, what do you call it? Uh, meta char set, right? Meta char set UTF-8, okay, because we're going to need that. Great, so now I have uh, some stuff in my, in my head and uh, some stuff in my body. Um, what should I call this div? Just uh, content, give it a class of content, right? Um, and then uh, I can jump over to CSS and style this. So. Uh, let's go over to my CSS file. I'm going to select the, well, first of all, when it comes to CSS, I want to throw in a few resets. So let's uh, just say a star, which is going to select everything on the site and say padding zero and then margin zero pixels. Um, great. Let's come back here and refresh. Okay, so now that got rid of paddings and margins, which uh, is what I wanted to do because I um, you don't want to be working against browser default paddings and margins, so you just want to get rid of all of those. Right, and then I want to select my body, and if we look at my design over here, you can see that I have a picture in the background of my website, and it's taking up the entire website or this is just a splash page, but yeah, it's taking up the entire splash page. So it just makes sense to add that as a background image for the body. So let's go back over to my uh, CSS file and then say background URL. And that's going to allow me to set a background image for the body of my website. And what I'd like to do here is grab that image name, right? Again, to the guy who was commenting about JavaScript files not loading, uh, this is like 99.99% .99 of the problem. Sorry, I hit the mic. I hope that didn't make a weird noise. But anyway, this is like always the problem when somebody sends me a message saying that files aren't loading or images aren't loading or something. Uh, they generally make their mistake here in specifying the file path. So I made it easy for myself right now because my image is in the same location as my CSS file and it's in the same location as my index file. But had this image been in a folder called images or had this image been you know, somewhere else on the site, I would have had to have put in a completely different URL right here. And if I put in the wrong URL, of course, the image won't load or the JavaScript file won't load. Um, so yeah, you just need to make sure that you're always using the correct file path. Okay, so let's save this now and jump back over to the browser, see my progress. Hopefully I have a background image and I do, and that takes up pretty much the whole site. Uh, but what I'd really like to do is position this background image so that it starts in the center so that hopefully this coffee mug is pretty much almost always visible. Um, so I want to go background position and I think I want to set that to center. Center and center. I don't know if that's actually a, a value but um, yeah okay turns out it is. Uh, <laughs> right because you can have it on the center of the x-axis and on the center of the y-axis. So what happened here was center and center centered it on the uh, x-axis and then on the y-axis which pulled the image like 
a little bit this way and then a little bit up as well. So um, <laughs> it basically started over there. I don't know if that's actually what I'd like. I think maybe center and then bottom. Hopefully this was X and Y and not Y and X. Let's see what happens. Okay, yeah, that looks a little bit better. Um, something else I wanna do is set this to cover. Um, and that is actually a completely different value, by the way. I think if we say a yeah, background, oops, background uh, size cover, right? Uh, that will then stop the repeat. No, it's not stopping the repeat. Uh, okay, so let's get rid of that nasty repeat by going background, repeat, no repeat. Uh, and I'm using fairly like low level CSS right now. I'm like, there's actually a shortcut where when you use background, you can put in the URL, you can put in whether you want it to repeat or not. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do, uh, basically all in one line <laughs> as a shortcut instead of having five different rules. But for the for simplicity's sake, I just want to use um, one rule at a time. It's going to be a lot easier. Let's come back here and refresh. Okay, so um, it uh, I think I see my problem, right? I need the background of the body to go 100% of the browser size. Right now it's only going as far as I have content, which is only those three lines. So how do I fix that? Well, uh, hmm. <laughs> I'm not quite sure at the moment, actually. I need to think. Uh, I guess if I say height, 100%. Nope. I wonder. Okay, so that div is going there. The body is only taking up as much space as the div. How do I make this go 100%? That is interesting. Oh, by the way, um, do you see this shortcut over here? See, Firefox basically shortened everything that I wrote out on multiple lines. Um, Firefox shortened it so that it can literally just be all in one line. So if you're ever looking to get a short code of a bunch of rules and you don't really know what order they're going to be in, uh, you can always uh, type them out and then go over to your element ex inspector, which in this case I use Firebug and uh, inspect the element. Um, and yeah, then you get a short code like this. By the way, I haven't checked at the comments, but uh, I'm sure some people are probably confused. Stream health is bad. Oh no. Nobody asked me to do this, Ahmed. I'm just doing it because I want to do it. <laughs> I did kind of explain that at the beginning of the video. Um... Okay, guys, I'm just reading some of your comments here because I'm seeing, uh, I saw a message that said the stream health is bad. Uh, so I don't know what the quality is like on uh, on your guys' side. Uh, it doesn't look too bad for me, the quality of the video right now. Um, can you guys see everything fine or not really? Okay, cool. <laughs> Sorry, I've got, a, I've got a message over here that says, um, video stream is not good. So I'm kind of panicking right now. <laughs> if it looks blurry, uh, I'm sorry. Right, so uh, yeah, let's... Uh... Let's... Uh... <laughs> 
Sorry, I'm just reading the comments come in. Somebody said, I'm so busy, ha 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 ha. I don't know if that's uh, sarcasm or not. But uh, yeah, guys, look, if, uh, if you've just joined in, what I'm trying to do is just make a splash page for my site. I did kind of announce this at the beginning of the video. Uh, I guess maybe I'll just keep announcing it every now and then. But yeah, I'm trying to make a splash page for my website right now. Um, I don't really have poor Wi-Fi. Uh, DJN, DJN. Um, my speed, if we do this, is like not so bad, actually. <laughs> um, who wants who wants to see me do a speed test? Uh, got nothing to do with the video. But let's do a speed test. D does it, this site take really long to load for everybody else? Because it always takes long to load for me, even though my speed, like when it finally lo loads, is uh, is quite high. So I don't know. We'll see what's happening here. Yeah? Is that is that slow internet though? Actually, that is only half of what I'm supposed to be getting. I'm supposed to be getting 40 megabits per second download, so I'm only getting 20 right now. Not sure why. It also seems to be a little bit unstable, but yeah, I think it's probably because I'm streaming at the same time that I'm doing this. So that's going to affect things. And yeah, this is supposed to be uh, 20 megs upload as well. And I guess I have almost that. <laughs> anyway, speed test had absolutely nothing to do with the video. Um, cool, guys. Let me just continue with making this splash page for you. So uh, I should probably have been viewing the, the, the website or the index HTML file here uh, through MAMP, through my local host. Hopefully you guys can see this. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get this content where it should be. So, um, get rid of that duplicate style rule. Uh, what did I want to do? I wanted to make the the uh, body take up one hundred percent of the browser. So sometimes I don't know how to do things. I have to Google things as well. Um, so let's try see. Uh, force. By the way, I don't. Maybe, maybe I can just come right without that. Height one hundred percent. What happens if we just take that away again? I know that that probably is going to keep the same result. That's fine. Background position, background size, cover. Cover should actually be forcing the body to take the full. Browser width. Let's get rid of these two for now and see what happens again because it was pretty much the whole browser width before. Background size 100%. No. Which rule broke it? That's what I want to know. Probably this rule. Background, position, center, bottom. Hmm. Let's get rid of that because it kind of works right now without it. And then I'll figure out how to fix that later. But for now, what I'd really like to do is be able to have this font big and white and open sans. So. I need to link to a Google font, so let's go to Google Fonts. And then look for what is it? Open Sans. So if you guys are ever wanting to uh, get fonts to your website, then this Google. Um, font directory is pretty awesome. I don't know if you've ever heard about it or not, but 
yeah, hopefully you have. Hopefully you're not living under a rock, but Google has this pretty awesome font directory. Uh, and there are a lot of fonts here. There's, um, okay, I, I want to use Open Sans, but there are like a crazy amount of fonts. So go ahead and search through all of them. Uh, yeah, there are a lot and they're all web safe because they're all hosted by Google. But uh, we want Open Sans. That's it's a pretty popular one. Most people tend to use it. And uh, all you need to do is then um, click on the little plus button, this box appears, and then you can uh, copy and paste the link and that's going to help you get a font onto your website. So, um, whoops, <laughs> that needs to go up here in the head. Uh, so that'll link to the Open Sans font. And uh, you can see if you take that URL, it literally just, uh, brings a, a CSS file with all of the fonts through to your site. So uh, what I'd like to do, by the way, I'm really nervous as I do this, guys, because I've never actually live streamed and built something at the same time. I just thought that this would be cool uh, to do. Uh, but yeah, let's, uh, let's, uh, um, let's take a look. I don't think anything's going to change right now, uh, but now I can go over to my... Uh, CSS file and also under my body uh, set font family equal to uh, open sans, but I want it written that way. Um, actually, Google will tell me exactly what I need to type. You have to type this as a style. Font family is equal to open sans or uh, sans serif. Uh, and I don't think I've ever ex actually explained this in a tutorial before, uh, but this comma and then having a secondary uh, font over here basically just tells the browser use open sans, but if for some reason open sans fails to load, then just skip to any sans serif font as a backup. Like, it doesn't matter what sans serif font, any sans serif font is good. Um, and uh, that's basically what that, that style rule means. Okay, so uh, if we jump back over the browser now and refresh, the font should change, which it has. Um, I'm not sure if you saw everything just kind of straighten up and become a sans serif type font, right? Uh, and then I think what I want to do is select the uh, this div with the class of content. And now um, just make all the text within this white. So let's just say uh, color FFF. Um, what else do we want to do? Uh, we just want to make everything really, really, really big. So let's just say font uh, size, and I'm going to make this something ridiculous like 3M just to test and see what happens. Okay, so that actually made it quite big already. Sweet. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, and then I think I want to center all the text. So um, text align. Center. Awesome, so that's looking pretty close to what I had in the Photoshop design. Um, I do want that pie to be bold. It doesn't look very bold right now. It also doesn't look anywhere near as big as I wanted it to be. And the paragraph also doesn't look big. It's also not bold. Uh, and then the button. So let's, let's increase the size of everything. But instead of doing it that way, let's select all headings within that H1, or all, all H1s within that uh, content, and give that a font size of, and I can come to Photoshop now, and then click on this, uh, that's a paragraph, that's the heading. Wow, 
490 pixels. <laughs> wow, okay, I really made that big, but cool, let's, uh, let's try 400 pixels for now to see what happens. Okay, awesome, that is <laughs> insanely big. Um, cool, well, uh, that's, that's, uh, let's try 200 and let's also set the, set the font weight here to 900 and hopefully that gets a little bit bolder. It didn't, I think it's as bold as it can be already. Um, I'm just trying to figure out now why this looks a lot bolder than that. Did I include, ah, okay. So when linking to a Google font, sometimes you might want to customize this a little bit. And right now we only have a uh, regular font um, weight at 400. But because I want the bold version, I wanna tick that box. And if I come back over here to the embed link, you might notice that our link has actually changed a little bit. Uh, so let's go back to my index.html and let's replace this link with the new one. And you'll see that now we have Open Sans and we have 400 and 800 in the URL, which basically just uh, allows us to pull through the bolder font. And now I have a much bolder high which is uh, awesome because I've, I've actually pulled through the, uh, the actual bold font, so I customized that over here, right? Okay, so now I have my high. Uh, the next thing I want to do is um, also fix the paragraph and fix that link. So let's uh, jump back over to Photoshop. How big do I have this paragraph if I Look at that text, it is 72 pixels. Okay, let's try work with that, 72 pixels. Um, so let's con uh, select all the paragraph within our content class and try setting that to 72 pixels and the font weight, should we leave that bold at 900? Let's see. Okay, that is really, really big. <laughs> so let's decrease that size a little bit. Um, let's try 34. I think 34 is going to be good. Not too bad, maybe a little bit bigger. Try 45. Something like that. Right, and then let's try and get that button styled a little bit better. So I'm going to give this class a, oh, this uh, link a class, because right now it's not a button, it's a link, and I keep calling it a button, uh, but there's a reason why. So let's give this a class of button link. And copy that, save this file. Um, and then select this button link class. I'm gonna give it a background. And now I need to go back to Photoshop because I wanna know what color I used there. So let's get an eyedropper tool by pushing the eye. And uh, that's gonna select the color from Photoshop. And now I can get the uh, HTML hash right, which is 39B54A, uh, and paste that in over here. Remember to put my little hashtag in front of that. That should add a background color to my link. Then I also want to uh, maybe just give this a little bit of uh, padding. So we'll give it like 10 pixels on the top and 20 pixels on the left and the right. And then I also want to make sure that any text on this button is also bolded. So let's get the font weight of 900, or we could just say, um, by the way, 
I've set the font weight to 900 here. Um, and actually, the only font size or the, the weight of the boldest font that we have is 800. So, that actually means my CSS is a little bit wrong because this should be 800 instead of 900. Um, and the reason why that was actually working and everything was getting bolded to the boldest it could be is because when I set this to 900, it would just fall back to the boldest font it could find, which was 800. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. It's probably going to confuse a few people. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, okay, cool. So now I have my button looking a little bit more like a button over here, but it doesn't quite look like the design. So let's see if we can fix that. First of all, I'm going to add a paragraph uh, tag around this link. Okay, that made it much, much bigger. Uh, and uh, now I think I need to give this button or either of the paragraphs a margin and I need to change the text color. So let's come back here to my CSS. Okay, button link, um, color, hash, f, f, f. That should change the text color. Okay, we also want to get rid of that underline, that text decoration, because that looks kind of ugly. Text decoration, let's, uh, by the way, can you guys see all of this or should I make it bigger? It's been a while. <laughs> it's been a, quite a while that the video has been running and now I'm, now I'm offering to make the code bigger. Um, anyway, text decoration, none, and that should get rid of the underline on the link over here. Awesome, all right? So let's take a look at that compared to the design. The text does look a lot smaller here, doesn't it? Uh, and the bit text on the button also does look a lot, a lot smaller. So it also looks a lot less bold, doesn't it? So let's just try 400 for the paragraphs and for the links. Okay, 400 isn't quite as quite what I wanted, is it? Also, you can see that the uh, paragraph and the button um, are kind of overlapping each other. So that could be due to not having a margin underneath our paragraph, which um, yes, okay. Uh, that comes from not having a, uh, a margin under our paragraph. So remember we set the uh, margins to none for everything. Uh, that's, that's what we did up here. So actually, paragraphs are going to need to have, oops, paragraphs are going to need to have a margin below them of something. So let's just say uh, margin bottom um, and I suppose we just want to make that 20 pixels. I'm just going to guess right now. <laughs> um, okay, so that looks a little bit better. Although, uh, I don't know. There could have been a better way to do this, like use a percentage. Although, this is, might break everything. Let's just see. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's a, a really crazy amount. So let's just say let's let's say thirty pixels. Okay, cool. That looks that looks better. Um, there is some spacing between the paragraph and the actual button. Also, my content right now is going like completely towards the end of the browser, like this. Um, so when the browser was smaller, there's no space on either side. I think I want to fix that a little bit. So. Um, Let's go to this div with a class of content and actually give it a like, max width. So I'm going to uh, select that div, which we've actually all got, already got a selector for it over here. And then I'm just going to say 
uh, max width um, 1000 let's actually say 80 percent right come back here and refresh right so now that looks a little bit better because uh, it's like not going all the way to the end of the browser but it is all on the left side and not in the center so to fix this let's uh, go say margin zero well actually just zero and auto should do the trick so this is going to set a margin of zero on the top and the bottom and then auto on the left and the right which will automatically center the div so there we go awesome <laughs> now it is uh, in the center um, hmm. what else can we do I actually would like this to be in the center of the page as well instead of uh, here well you know what I'm saying I'd like it to be this whole thing should be here more or less in the center there is a trick to this um, not sure how to get this done um, see if I take this class of content and I say position absolute top zero bottom zero left zero and then right zero um, yeah let's actually let's actually put this all at the bottom okay uh, so this is a trick that centers everything um, so if I come back here yeah, let's see if it works it doesn't does it okay um, interesting say relative I have done this before it's just been a while since I last used this trick uh, but uh, basically it's supposed to stretch everything uh, and center it but let's just see um, how to center a div in the center of its parent that's that's how you google stuff <laughs> like get as direct as you possibly can um, uh, yeah like ask the question to google and then uh, you'll probably find an answer um, hmm. margin zero pixels auto that's what we've already got new i think css tricks there's a website called css tricks there we go, that is it. Um, <laughs> CSS tricks is where I learned this trick from. So I'm pretty sure this is actually the link that I was looking for. Just gotta wait for it to load. Um, well, we know about horizontally, I want to center it vertically. Is it inline or block? It's a block level element. Do you know the height of the element? Can you use flexbox? Is the element unknown? This is the one. Okay, so the parent needs to be relative. The child needs to be absolute. Top 50%. Y translate 50%. Cool. Um, and then essentially this is the result, right? Where you have the block um, in the center vertically. So what they're saying I should do is take the parent and give it a position of relative which in this case would be my body so position relative and then the child which is the thing that I want to center and in this case it is my content div so let's um, make that absolute top 50% so let's get rid of these lefts and rights and bottoms and all that kind of stuff. Top 50%. Let's take a look at what that does so far. Okay. <laughs> uh, everything is not centered this way again. 
Um, I'm actually not centered the other way either. Um, transform. Let's just take that last rule and just paste it in here and see what happens. Okay, that pulled it out. So that one isn't working. Oops. Awkward. Tricky. I'm not sure how I'm going to fix this now. Let's go back to what I had. So let's get rid of all of this and get rid of that over there. Let's go back to what I had. Cool. I want to center this vertically, but how am I going to do that? Hmm. Yeah, sometimes you just gotta play around. Like it doesn't, uh, it doesn't work straight away. Uh, just checking out some of you guys' comments here. Everybody seems to be from India. Are they talking about Nepal and uh, places in India? I suck at technology. This makes me feel like I'm getting some <laughs> what? Getting some game watching this. Getting some game. Girl lost. Girl got lost. What game are you getting? Right. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, if you guys have just joined in, I haven't said this for a while, but I want to make a splash page for my website. Um, and yeah, we're kind of almost there right now. I just want to be able to center this content vertically. Um, and uh, I suppose uh, ES Online is trying to help me here. Add HTML height is equal to 100%. It actually should be already. Uh, no, it isn't. Cool. Let's try. Try that. HTML height 100%. Okay, cool. Thanks. Now let's try that uh, trick that we had again. So position relative, and actually let's force that to be 100% as well. Um, just check if it actually is rendering at 100%. So uh, guys, I keep opening the uh, element inspector. Um, and yeah, if I hover over the body tag, I can see that it now is forced to be 100% which means if I take this content div and I set that position to uh, absolute top 50%, that's gonna push it down a little bit. And then what was the other one? What was that last rule that he had? Transform translate. So I think if, if I take all of these right now, And I place them there. Hey. Uh, I should have everything centered. Awesome, kind of, but not really, because it's uh, it's got this space here, and that's because of the position being absolute. So uh, I suppose we can also go left 50% and then ah.
It doesn't look so bad there. Like that. What happens on a different screen size though? iPhone. Okay, yeah, we're definitely going to have to change some settings for iPhone, iPad. I suppose we could leave it at that. Okay. So let's uh, get rid of that max width and let it be 100% as a div would normally be. Okay, now I need to fix this. Uh, this problem where you can't see the image and the text. Now, I did talk about that in Photoshop. I said, um, all you need to do is darken the actual image. So let's hide all of these things. And now I have the darker image and I'm just going to file, export, save that to my desktop, I guess. Very high. What are my settings now? Let's let's bring that down a little bit actually. Sixty percent, one hundred and seventy-two kilobytes. Save this, and I think we can put it in HT Docs, and we can just save over the current image that's there. Replace that. Um, come back over to the browser and I should have a darker image. So now the text is a little bit more visible to you guys. I do think that I need to actually shrink this a little bit, but for now it kind of works for desktop. So that is a, a little splash page. And interestingly enough, it did take some time to get done. So not everything, you know, like when I make my tutorials, generally I plan everything beforehand, like, and then I kind of just code it out in front of you without actually figuring things out. But I hope you guys could actually see from this live stream that sometimes, you know, if you if you haven't actually planned something out, uh, it does take a little bit of time to to uh, figure out what CSS rule you need where, and uh, you know, sometimes uh, you do have to think a little bit about certain things. By the way, this button, I do think. Um, there are certain rules that are not applying because it's not displaying as a block. So let's look at this. Um, I definitely gave this button uh, some padding. Um, 20 pixels, right? Let's try 50. Okay, so it's not that it wasn't applying, it's just that I didn't really give it as much padding as I wanted or needed, I think. Okay, so let's fix that up a little bit. Change the padding to 50 pixels. Okay, that's better. And uh, I think what I want to do now is maybe just work on, okay, the iPad, iPad resolution is uh, 768 by 1024. That doesn't look too bad actually for an iPad uh, splash page, but definitely um, if you take a look at 375, actually I think the height is a little bit wrong. An iPhone is actually a little bit higher than 585. Um, yeah, I do definitely need to fix this though. So, um, I think the best solution here would be to just make the text all a little bit smaller. Um, so right now I think we're sitting at 45. Let's try and make that like 25. Um, yeah, about, probably about 30 or something will do. And then the heading, um, by the way, guys, when you see me changing things on the fly, it's because I'm changing them here in the uh, Element Inspector. Um, I think font size here, we can do 100 for the high, and then it works on iPhone as well, more or less. I kind of need to find out what the height of an iPhone is, but even, if it, even at that height, it should be fine. So, Basically what I want to do here is use a media query. Um, when I 
by the way, when I make changes in the uh, element inspector, obviously these are not permanent changes. These are just there to uh, to kind of test, I guess. But uh, yeah, to make changes permanent, you obviously want to put them in your text editor. And uh, obviously, um, what I want to do to fix things on an iPhone is use a media query. So at media. What is it? At media, screen and max width, but I feel like I'm getting something wrong here. And max width equals small. Uh, I forgot this. Uh, the way I type this. <laughs> so uh, fortunately we have Google media query syntax. So yeah, like it's okay to Google stuff. Um, if you can't really remember it, of course, nobody wants to remember the syntax of how everything is written. As long as you know the tools that are available to you, um, you're good. Uh, but I want, I don't think that this is the exact media query rule I want. So let's go to W3 schools. I think there is a better at media screen and max width, min width. Okay. Um, all right, so they're working with min width here. I want to use max width. And uh, instead of 480, um, okay, so at an iPhone uh, size, this seems to be fine, but I'm going to then start changing everything at 767 pixels, which means uh, 767 is the value I'll put in here, 767. Uh, so basically a medium screen like an iPhone or an I, I mean an iPad is always going to show what's displaying at 768 uh, seven, uh, but once I go one pixel down to 767 seven, um, whatever code I place within this media query will start to show so if I go over to my uh, content paragraph and my content h1 over here and I just make these a little bit smaller. Um, let's make that text. I think I said 30 pixels, and then I think I said I was going to make this 100 pixels. Um, it should now change at this screen resolution, which is fine. Um, because now, when people look at this either on a Samsung or an uh, iPhone uh, 5, uh, this is pretty much what they should see. This is pretty much what they should look like. So we have a splash page that is not only responsive, um, uh, it works on desktop and mobile, so it's responsive, uh, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty awesome. I don't know where I was going with the, it's not only responsive, <laughs> um, but yeah, that's pretty cool. I just think, uh, you know, my image is not quite where I, I, I need it to be right now either because if I ever have a screen that is larger than 1920, I think I can actually change this. So if, if somebody has a screen that's 2000 pixels, like a 4K screen, my image doesn't quite go past that, uh, that width. So we still need to fix that a little bit. Um, and the way that we need to do that is obviously that background cover rule. So background cover, let's play around with that, see what happens. Background size, I want cover there. So I should be able to just set it to background size cover. But that's what we had earlier. Let's try this. Background size, cover. Right? 
tambahnya refresh and then also open up my mobile viewer okay so my background image seems to cover um, the site right now uh, but there is no let's see what happens refresh here not, it's not centering the content on such a big screen but on 1920 we're good I think that's only because of the line break actually hmm. so I think a quick way around this is to go over to my content div and give this some padding of make it 50 pixels or something big which then means I bet we're gonna have to change this in our media query don't know what it's gonna be just yet but let's um, let's take a look at this on a mobile phone okay that doesn't look so bad on that size but let's see what happens here doesn't look awful, <laughs> um, but I think we could just decrease that a little bit. So um, let's take that padding and make it something like let's make it twenty pixels. And if you're wondering what I just, by the way, is it blurry? It's blurry, right? This is my live connection thing. Um, by the way, if you guys are wondering what that last little section was, that was just me um, putting padding. So uh, basically this purple line that you see around the content, uh, that, is, uh, that is the padding I just put in. So that just gives us some spacing along the sides of all of the content. So basically it just doesn't push against the side. Um, but yeah, look, as a splash page, I think this is gonna work perfectly okay. Uh, I don't think it needs to be any more complicated than this. So um, what I'm gonna do is take all of this content that is um, in my main CSS file and in my HTML file. Uh, and of course that image over there, by the way, there's nothing in that. Uh, I'm going to take all of this content and I'm just going to push it live. So when you go, when you go to, uh, my website, quintonwatt.com, instead of it being a blank website, we'll have the actual, um, splash page. And, uh, hopefully, uh, I will design a much better website soon and have a much better website up there. But for now, you know, we're going to work with this, uh, splash page. It doesn't exactly look 100% like my design, but I'm, I'm okay with that, right? Uh, I'm okay with where it looks in the browser. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> I think uh, I'm going to end the live stream off here. Hopefully this helps a few people. I think, <laughs> you know, a lot of time I get questions um, from viewers, um, uh, you know, like, just assuming that I know everything or that, uh, you know, I just think CSS in my head, but hopefully you guys got to see a little bit more about the building process. I mean, this is something super, super simple, but yet it still took me um, a fair amount of time to complete. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to, to live stream this to kind of show you guys that like, um, this is the process. This is how I go about doing things. Um, you know, I could probably have sped this up a little bit by uh, preparing beforehand um, but I just didn't I just didn't want to prepare beforehand because I want I, I didn't want this to go super super quickly I wanted this to be like you guys watching me um, do something simple like this from start to finish and you can actually see that it does take time to get things right and sometimes yes I do make mistakes and sometimes I do have to google stuff 
um, that is just like the job of developer. You're gonna you're gonna be uh, you know asking yourself questions. You're probably gonna hit a few errors, and you're gonna have to be fixing things all of the time. Uh, so yeah, it's just a much a much more realistic look at development. And uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna <laughs> end the video off there. So I'll see you guys next time.